I'm Jeff Allen, and I'm a plein air artist, and I do a lot of my work, <clears throat> excuse me, outside. And uh, I feel like for you, every, anyone taking a workshop from me, they have to have the some essential things that will make the, the experience um, a good experience. And so I just wanted to go over what those are. And I, first off, I do want to say uh, what I like about plein air is that I think it puts you in the tourist traveler state of mind. And uh, I think that's, it's like a drug for me. Like I feel like if I go too long and I don't do it, I, get, I can get a little um, go through withdrawals. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think it challenges me too to be loose. I do illustrative work at home in the studio and I was just working so much in the studio, I just wanted to get out so much. And this was a great way I don't know, it was a great activity for me and it loosened me up and it kind of broadened my skills. And I think the more, watercolor is very quick, I think for me compared to oil. And uh, I was able to do more work that way. And I felt like, well, if I can do more work and go through this stuff, I'll, I'll advance quicker. And I think that has been the case. I think I was right about that. So anyhow, <clears throat> let me start off by just saying, like stating some goals, I think that I want, I, hopefully you, we share these goals, you know, and, and going out to do plain air, but, um, <clears throat> and the first goal is to have some fun. And, um, and then another goal I think would be too to be able to focus on what we're doing. And, um, and I think those two things depend on bringing some, some, some I call it the right stuff. You know, you want to bring the right stuff. Um, and, and so, uh, and also whatever, when you get your stuff, try it in your backyard. Like before I went out to plein air painting, I was doing so much prep for it at home cause I was so nervous about it. And I would set up my, uh, gear in my backyard and just go through, our, go through the steps. And I really think that's a, a great idea. Do and that way you make sure you know you have everything. And I usually pack up the night before. I guess that's a very Boy Scout, Girl Scout kind of thing to do, but it works, and you end up with the right things. Um, so uh, okay, so let's just get started. The questions you have to ask yourself, and it's sort of a why in the road, I think, in terms of preparing for your setup we'll call it the plein air setup. It's just all the things you're gonna bring so that you'll be comfortable outside and you'll be able to get to everything. Um, and that is, are you gonna stand up or are you gonna sit down? Okay, so standing up entails, you're gonna need a tripod. I have a <clears throat> my tripod right back here. It's It gets pretty high and I'm a tall guy and so I need that so I'm not stooping down. So. You know, if you're getting a tripod, you know, it's best if you can to actually um, physically like test them out that way, or, or at least, uh, you know, on the specs, it'll say like how high the tripod is. And so you can go, oh yeah, that'll work for me, but it'll take a little research to find it. And I'll give you uh, some suggestions for tripods. So for the standing method of a plein air setup, you need a tripod that sort of matches your height. And some come really short and some come really high. So that's where you have to do your research. The other thing is some just tilt in one direction and some have uh, universal, uh, they're called ball heads. And they can tilt in any direction. That's what I have, that's what I prefer, but those are more expensive. What you want to watch out for is getting a short tripod because once you get your shelf on it, it's going to be really, really low. So I think it's even, it's better to get something taller so that you can make it short if you want to. And it all depends on how tall you are. Or you can just get a kit that has everything in it. And one is the, uh, the In Plain Air Pro. And it's basically a kit that comes with a tripod, a shelf, and a stand that you can rest your work on. So, and that's sort of like an all-in-one thing. Not the only brand either. So check out Amazon, um, do a Google search for uh, watercolor setups outdoors. I think if you buy the Inplaner Pro, it's gonna be the cheapest 
all in one kit, I think you'll end up spending more money if you buy a la carte, sort of like a restaurant. Okay, so, so just to be clear, you need a tripod with plus a shelf, plus an easel attachment to get a, a, a la carte setup, which is pretty close to my own. However, um, the, the tripod I show here just has, uh, it just adjusts in one way, it's not a ball head. And if you have a tripod, you, you're probably halfway there. You can just get the shelf and the easel attachment and you're good to go. So, um, so the other thing, the other question you need to ask yourself, first it's like, am I gonna stand or am I gonna sit down? And then the sitting Those decisions down. might inform the next big decision that you need to make. And are you gonna buy sheet paper? You know, it comes in a big sheet, 22 by 30. And you're gonna cut that down. And when you cut that down, you're gonna need a board. And this is for taping on the sheet paper. Board, it's a stiff board, you can, it's quite dirty. Um, it does stain. Or um, another kind of board, which is under here too, is um, it's a plastic sign board and these wipe off really nice but they're not as stiff they're not but you're not going to be going making anything big and these are sold at like home depot for like 10 bucks maybe and probably staples might have them but people usually uh, attach signs to them put them in their yard so it's really cheap stuff uh, anyhow this is better just because it's a uh, structural but cheaper but this will work fine and then the other thing, um, so sheets or blocks, these are called watercolor blocks, and it's glued around the edge, the paper is. <clears throat> and so you don't have to tape it down at all, and it stays all together, and you can just put it up um, uh, right on you know, your easel. So um, there's two ways of doing it. I do the taped way, so, but um, this way is fine. Um, I would say I would get the most Arch, Arch, Arches is pretty good, great quality, so is Saunders, Waterford. Um, but Windsor makes a paper, that's great. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the good paper makers make a block. And I would just say get, this is 10 by 14, and I think this would be a good size for you for our class. Because it'll be, it'll be enough room that you can get a sky in and other things. And you, of, of course you can go larger. This is a 16 by 12 or 12 by 16. So this is fine too. But don't get anything smaller because we're going to be doing some washes and I, I want to show you how to do washes and this will really do well. So, but I wore, okay. Well, here I have some, uh, I'm not sure. This is Fabriano. Oh, that's another good brand, Fabriano. And I'm just going to grab some brushes and I'm going to quickly do a wash. I'm going to show you two brushes and these brushes I ask you to get so you should have them and I'm just going to check yeah that we're, this is in focus because I want you to get a close-up view of this. I have some water here and I'm just going <clears> to <throat> mix some color here really quick and usually I meant to have this taped up but um, I'm just going to hold it and this is a pretty small piece of paper. So I'm making a little mixture here. Um, we'll put a little carmine in there. Oh yeah, brighten it up. I want you to be able to see this. So I'm gonna do like a little test here with these two brushes. And I want you to look at this. I think you can see that okay over here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna scoop up the as much moisture. This is called a quill mop and it's a goat hair. They come in synthetic. Um, they all work great, but they function like a shovel to get water up on your thing. And we're doing watercolor and you need the water to do certain things. It mixes paper, it creates soft edges, it does all this magical stuff. And so you need this to get it on that paper. Okay, I'm going to squeeze this. I just want to show you how much water comes out, like quite a bit. Not that all that's going to come out when you're... Um, when you're actually painting, but it'll it'll deliver a lot of water to your paper. And then this brush, one, two. So I got two drops, maybe three. I think something came out before. Okay, so um, so if you show up with this and you're trying to cover, you know, a larger piece of paper, it's it's going to be you're not. 
it's not going to happen. You're not going to use enough water. So I want you to get at least one, if not two, and you can get a couple different sizes. You know, you can get a big one or a smaller one. Um, and as, as I said, they're synthetic. But here I'm just going to get this, sop this up again. Okay, now we're just going to talk about paper. And this is Fabriano paper. I right. know this is Arches. Maybe this is Arches paper. Okay. And I think it's cold press and I want you guys to get rough if I didn't say that. And what's, why rough paper? Well, it has more of a texture to it. And I think it, it um, the way I want you to mix paint and learn how to mix paint, I think it's gonna um, mix paint on the canvas. I think it's going to um, uh, behoove you to get rough. And, but this, which is called cold press, it's sort of the medium texture. It's fine as well. Okay, so I'm going to put this on here really quick. I'm just going to try and do it down here so maybe this camera can pick up what this is seeing. But so all this is this uh, formation of this, uh, I call this a bead down below here. And as I shovel this on, you can see the water isn't sinking into the paper, it's sort of sliding down the paper and it's accumulating down here. And that's the sign of a good paper. Now, if it sucks into the paper, well, that's no fun because now we can't mix. Like here, I'm just gonna grab another color. This is a turquoise, a light turquoise. I'm just gonna put it right underneath here. And you're gonna see this uh, magenta sort of fall into, you know, it's sort of mixing in a sense. And maybe I can even put, grab some more of this magenta and put it, put another. But I'm mixing the colors. The water's doing it for me. The water's doing all the work. So, and that only happens when you have a good paper. And also, like if I want to take a thicker paint and put some thicker paint into it, well, it's staying wet because the water's on the surface. It's kind of being held. And so I can do that because of this paper is is, is a good quality. So, okay, so that's, so that's very important. I hope that illustrates the necessity of you spending a little bit more. Let's just go into brushes or actually I have my palette out here. We could talk about palettes really quick. So this one I, I do recommend, um, or one like this, like you can get something close to this in a plastic version. I mean, there's several, I mean, these, I'm not sure how, this I think is like 24 bucks and this might be, it could be about the same. And when you're standing or even sitting, you might want to hold this and apply it to your, um, uh, your, bo your board, where your, your artwork. But say if you have your, if you're sitting and you have something on your side, on your lap, you're going to need this to be sitting somewhere off the side, say, to, to work with this. And that's what I mean. You have to sort of figure that out ahead of time, which one you're doing. And, and hopefully the pictures I show you of people painting, sitting down, you'll see that they have something next to them that their, um, their palette sitting on or their brushes or their water. So you have something that, um, so you can have your painting on your lap and you can combine them too. You know, you can have a tripod in front of you with an easel and be sitting down. That's fine as well. Uh, okay, so uh, I recommend something like this um, or this, and this is another type. And this closes down, as you can see, and sort of it's it's like uh, watertight. Um, <clears throat> okay, so colors are listed. I don't think I'm going to go into um, the colors because they're they're on um, the supply list. But usually I just start off warm, as you can kind of see, and kind of go into the cooler ones. And then I have some fun dark ones over here. And uh, you know what I wanted to do too is just go quickly go through the colors on my palette that you see that I was using. And uh, I know it's not exactly like the supply list, so I thought I should do that. Uh, titanium white, uh, Jeune Brillant number one, which is basically like a yellow mixed with a white. Um, I have yellow ochre, which is, you know, if you had uh, raw sienna, that would be, that would, they're interchangeable just about. I have a cad yellow, uh, a 
a pyral orange, a cad red, a lizard crimson and permanent. And it's a little bit different color. It's more permanent as the name says. And uh, so I sort of switched to that. Uh, burnt sienna, um, ultramarine blue. Those two, if I mix them together and cobalt, I get sort of a gray. So I have them close. I use them quite often. So they're the easiest for me to reach. And then I have a teal blue after the cobalt blue, or a, a cobalt teal, sorry, cerulean blue, a verdadier blue, which is basically sort of a cobalt with a white. And again, a lot of times these are convenience colors. Like I can grab it instead of mixing it. Um, okay, and after that, lavender, uh, phthalo blue, cobalt violet, cobalt turquoise, uh, Van Dyke brown, Payne's gray, and neutral tint. Another big thing, I guess that we could talk about too is how do you get um this is how my device for carrying everything around with me and i have um uh, this is the pashad box i made but it holds paper and it's the board i paint on and it attaches um it's my shelf as well it comes apart and it has a shelf and so it does a whole lot of things um all at once for me so i carry that and i carry this when I'm walking around. And this has, you know, my tripod and my paints and all the other things that I'm about to show you um, in it. And it's very light and I like it because a backpack sort of falls over, but something like this, it's rolling, it's easy on my what back. I put in there. Um, my brushes, you don't have to have this many brushes. So what I'd like you to show up with is a, at least this combination, like, um, if you just had one of these, that's okay too, but at least this and if, what you need. And one is a synth, this is synthetic and they come in many, many brands, but I like this one. And this is the same brand and they, it's a Skoda and they, um, you know, it's like, it's very, they're very stiff. And so there's a lot of control. Whereas this, it's very soft. Like I can see how it just kind of pushed it over. So, um, but because of that, it's, it absorbs a lot of water and it's a light touch. So that's what you need, but you can bring other things. I, I have a palette knife, you know, for scraping. This is called a line brush and you, it's great for doing little trees and little fine, fine things. That's great to have. Um, I have different brushes for different things. I have a really, really tiny brush and this brush isn't for a little detail. It's actually for like sort of scraping paint on really thick paint. And as we go on with a painting, say you start with this, lots of water. And as you get into more and more detail, it's sort of, it's sort of like the paint gets thicker and there's less water and you use these things. Okay, so that's brushes. And you can see I have a holder. And if you spend any money on your brushes, if you spend a lot, you might want, it's a good idea to get some kind of holder. And this is another um, way of carrying them that's a little bit cheaper. They stick in here and this rolls up. And it's, it's anything to keep the bristles from getting something up against them and pushing on them. That's, that's what you want to avoid. Okay, so let's put that aside, our brushes and I sort of talked about the palette, so we don't need to talk about that. Um, colors were okay on pencil, paper. Like I have a little bag, this goes up in the top here. And um, I have a couple, you know, clips if the wind's blowing and I wanna clip down my sketchbook, which is here. Um, like I can, you know, clip the pages down or, you know, they come end up being handy because you don't, you know, the weather, hopefully it'll be good, but you never know. So you bring a few things to help you get through weather <laughs> and let me see and the pencils i use mostly are these two and this is a 0.5 mill millimeter lead and mechanical pencil and this pencil and this is great for if i want to you know shade something in it does it much more efficiently than this this is sort of like if i want to do some finer detail i'll switch to this but this is sort of the big picture it keeps me loose and I put a kneaded eraser and it, this doesn't abrade our expensive papers. You know, it's, it's gentle on our paper. So I like to use this. It's pretty soft and it works great. And I just put it on my pencil because now I know, I know where it's at. 
Okay, that's it. I mean, you could bring other stuff, you know, I brought, you know, extra leads, um, but I've even like not had my uh, pencils. I forgot them and I picked up, I was on the beach and I picked up like a charred piece of wood and I just used that. So all this stuff is about being creative. Okay, this is my water source for painting. And these are my, you know, I have a couple water cups, but like you can just take it, something like this, um, a, um, a yogurt container and cut it like I did here and use that for cups. You don't have to spend money if you don't have to. And that's really the other thing. It's like, you know, everyone has to spend different amounts. I mean, um, and they have different intentions if they're going to they're planning on doing this for a long time and they're really excited about it. They might spend more. And if you're trying it out, maybe you can just, you know, you know, maybe I'd cut a few of these down instead of buying, spending, you know, 12 bucks on these. But these are, these are collapsible. So they're great for fitting in something. And so I have two because I like one gets dirty and I try and keep one clean and I have a sponge in this and it's a sponge. I, a lot of times I, I'm painting and I got too much water on my brush and I just tap it here and it just takes a little water out. And sometimes I flick it, but this is like a something in the middle. So I have that sponge. And then here I have, it's another clean water source if my waters get too dirty. And a, you know, a mister basically is what it's called. And this, uh, I just made this, it has some clips on the side and it sits on the side of my rig here. You know, wind comes up and it blows your paper towels and I don't like to go chasing that stuff. So, um, so that's why I have that tape, any size will do. I, I have thicker sizes and this is, I think like three quarter, um, or so, or maybe it's five eighths. Um, and again, like you don't need it if you're doing the, um, the block. So I have a little spare paint, um, and like a little Tupperware thing here. It's all my dregs. So in case I run out of something, you know, watercolor doesn't, you don't use a ton of paint. Um, so just a little bit will get you by. So I have that. And the sketchbook, this is a great size. I, I like it. And as I, as I do my sketches, I usually tear some out. And, you know, um, this is about, you know, I went, when we do sketches, you know, they're quick outside. They're not, they're not for a gallery or to present. It's just for me to, um, uh, figure out where I want to put things and how and and I guess to the format I want to do so it helps me my brain gives me time to figure things out and when it gets windy one thing I wanted to say too is bring some stringer strap because um, sometimes I've tied my easel to this this is stable and a lot of times if I have my water this is weighted and it keeps your easel from blowing over if you're standing. So anyhow, so there you go. That's that's what I carry around. And, and here is a, uh, a cart that um, it, it, it actually functions as like a cart. You took your stuff around and a chair. And I see tons of people using these things. They come in all sorts of dis different shapes and sizes. And uh, they seem to work out great. Carry around. And then paper, like... Um, you might, if you have a spare holder like this or a couple pieces of cardboard with tape on the bottom or, or some way of, um, transporting your paper. So if you, if, um, you know, just so it doesn't fly away, which has happened to me before. It's like you work hours on a piece and, uh, the wind takes it. Yeah. You know, other odds and ends stuff. Um, let's see, would be like hat, uh, snacks sunscreen um and i think i've covered about everything and so we'll probably go to questions but um remember to try the stuff out at home because that's when you'll go oh i don't have this and you should try and figure out a way whether you're sitting or you're standing where everything's within reach and i've had students like they throw their back out or you know, there's all these uh, uh, drama around stuff blowing away. And, you know, so try and figure out how to um, keep it all together and within reach, you know. And hopefully the pictures I'm going to show kind of elaborate on why that's important.
And I think, again, it's like you have fun and you can focus because you're not distracted by this, this, you know, the engineering of this work and stuff. So you can focus on the scene. So, okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I hope you take this workshop. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to plug um, an article that I wrote um, about my brushes that ended up in Realism Today online and American Watercolor online. And uh, I start off talking about um, my quill mops and there's a hack there. And these are what you need. These are the water shovels you need to get water or your puddles up onto your paper to get it moist and give you time. And then next I kind of covered um, the workhorses, they're sort of the medium sized snappy brushes that you do a lot of your cutting around with. Um, and I list the, the different uh, brands in the article. These are used brushes. And the last one there is splayed. I push pins in it. You can kind of experiment around with those and those are kind of fun. And lastly are sort of like the special things like a scraper, like short rounds, fan, uh, swords, liners, and soft brushes I use to make trees. And the last thing you is just a water bottle that I a uh, clean water source. Well, that's it. Thank you for uh, watching this video. And if you need to get in contact with me, you can do it through my website, jeffallenart.com.